In this design, I've already created a sketch on the front plane, uh, and I have two bodies in a component, and uh, there's something resembling some guts in there, but it's not quite right yet. So let's get rid of those bodies, and let's go edit the sketch, right click, edit sketch, and let's zoom in here and actually figure out what we need to do. So. One of the first decisions that you have to make when designing a yo-yo is, well, other than the, the general shape and size, is what sort of bearing that it's going to use. A, a very safe and easy default is to use a size C bearing, uh, which is an imperial bearing that has uh, a hole that is one quarter of an inch in diameter. So the post that it slides onto has to fit on a uh, inside that bearing. One cool thing actually uh, that you can find in Fusion that can make kind of conceiving of this whole process a lot easier is the McMaster car catalog. So let me add a component from this catalog uh, that is actually the same size as a C bearing. So let's go through bearings uh, and find a uh, precision stainless steel ball bearing. That sounds good. Uh, and the uh, shaft diameter is a quarter inch, so I'll click on that. The housing ID, that's the outer uh, diameter of the bearing. And we want one that is 3 sixteenths of an inch wide. So it's just 3 1 8 8 dash 2 Z. Uh, the, twos, the Z actually refers to uh, it being shielded, but that's fine. So then we can scroll down here, uh, choose step, and hit save. And uh, that's not going to work. All right, we got we got to rotate this. 90 degrees. All right, there we go. That's our bearing. And uh, we can see that my, let me slice the sketch. Uh, I missed, I missed by a little bit when I created uh, my bearing post, but that's fine. We can fix that. Uh, so that this is the bearing here. All right, so I'm gonna right click, unslice sketch, hide the component. Let's go fix this. So uh, the inner diameter is a quarter inch, which means the radius, because we're working with just a quarter of the cross section, is going to be an eighth of an inch. And an eighth of an inch is 3.175 millimeters. So let's create uh, a dimension in this sketch. So you press D or uh, you can uh, go to create sketch dimension and then click on the flat part of the bearing post and then click on the middle of the sketch. So uh, I had created a 3.75, let me change it to 3.175, it'll slide everything down. Well, uh, you may have noticed that this line now got put in the wrong spot. I'll just slide that back up. We'll fix that in place later. Uh, the hole here that gets drilled for the tap for the axle, uh, it's not actually important that you include that on your sketch for a machine shop, but it's fun to have it there uh, to see what sort of hole they're going to be drilling. Uh, we can actually look up and see what size hole needs to be drilled. Uh, but if I'm remembering it correctly, it is actually uh, 1.75 millimeters for an M4 axle. There we go. Now, uh, what, the other important dimension for uh, this bearing is the width. So we're creating everything with respect to this uh, center line here, right? Uh, this is where we're mirroring over and uh, let's kind of like quickly 
create the other features that we're going to need to dimension. So this will be uh, for the response pad. Uh, I like to use the trim tool to remove line sections there. Uh, and then the other part that is going to be here is the uh, the little uh, air pocket that sits under uh, the bearing. I'm going to use the extend tool to connect those together and then I will trim this out. All right. So uh, Fusion has added a whole bunch of constraints all over these lines because uh, of the way that I created them. Uh, one that I definitely want to delete is this one here, which is the collinear constraint. Collinear, it will force these two lines to always be at the same kind of, so that they could still connect. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. Uh, the rest are fine. I just like to, oop. Oh, they're still connected somehow. Just delete those. Okay, well, that's good. Now, what? <sighs> All right. Those two lines are—they were haunting each other clearly. All right. Uh, so we have our hole. We have our our post. Um, let me turn this on. We can sort of guess where this will go by just like sliding it until it's hitting the component. Uh, we can see that the it's touching the inside uh, perfectly. But let's say we want to position that using a constraint. Uh, we need to bring up our calculator. Uh, we have the width of 3 sixteenths. But we're actually only concerned about half of the bearing, so we'll say 3 30 seconds of an inch. Uh, that's 2.38252 millimeters. Uh, I'm just going to copy paste that, create the dimension right here from that uh, center line, and then uh, paste it in. Boop. There we go. One thing you may notice here when I, I turn that on is it's crashing into this part. Uh, so let's start by moving this closer to where it'll need to be. And then, um, then, then we can add a constraint. Although one important thing, this outer part, you can't, you can't have it touch the, the outer part of the bearing anyways. Uh, that's not allowed. They would rub together. Uh, so we're going to give it 0.1 millimeters of clearance, roughly. Roughly. That's that's good enough, right? Uh, so there. The bearing fits. Uh, how deep this goes, um, you can't make it deeper than the aluminum, of course, and you don't want it to go out here. Um, the If we look at the bearing, there's this part here that's connected to the inner race. Uh, this can be as thick as that. Um, uh, on an on an actual yo-yo bearing, the thickest I've seen that part is about like 0.8 millimeters. So uh, we'll we'll make we'll make this about there. That's good. All right, and then uh, I'll just I'll just line this up right there. We'll we'll adjust the layer if we need to. Okay, so uh, let's set our our gap and our pad dimensions. So uh, let's create a, a new constraint here to the center point. This is half of our gap width. I'm going to set that to 2.2. Uh, that will be exactly uh, the gap of 4.4 millimeters. How deep are pads and how big are they? So most yo-yo factory pads are uh, 1.15 millimeters. So we'll just set that there. And the inside diameter is about 14 millimeters. So we'll create a constraint from there. Uh, that would be seven millimeters. Um, different pads have different inner diameters. Uh, most pads are actually a little bit uh, the hole in the middle is a little bit bigger, so we can set that to like 7.1. Yeah, that sounds right. 
Uh, last little tidbit here. Why is this poking out? Uh, because I like it. Let me just uh, set it to 0.1. There we go. Alright. Uh, okay. Alright. The out the outside of the pads. We need to make a dimension for that as well. Let me zoom out. Add this here. Uh, 8.5 would be 17 millimeters diameter. We need to be uh, 9.5. That's 19 millimeter pads. Aha! That looks better and we can see that we didn't leave enough room for the pads. So I'm just going to slide this up. There we go. Uh, that wall is very small. Let me make it like a millimeter. Let's go look at this. Okay, so we have our pads. Uh, we have that part there. Uh, I'm just going to add a little fillet here. And then I'm going to slide this line down until that rounded part gets real close to there. Okay. So these are our guts. Uh, let me render it out and then see if it looks like what you imagine guts to look like. So let's revolve. Ah, that looks beautiful, especially with the bearing. Even flip it over that plane. slice sketch just to see how everything is touching. This looks like real engineering. It's great. Some of these are a little bit sharp. Those are things that you would want fillets on, for example. Um, this hole is very... Um, it's very small. But yeah, that's how you get the guts. Let's go render it. Do like a some sea foam, some sea foam looking thing. I keep hitting the wrong button. Oh, oh, that's nice. It's always handy to uh, render out some different angles. So we'll render that angle, and then we'll render. Uh, this angle and we'll render a cup shot. This is gonna look very nice. This is a very shiny yo-yo. And other than the in the incredibly small axle this is uh, these guts would probably work at a machine shop. Yay.